The way we harvest timber now has to be different than the way we harvested 50 years ago. Now, this location in the Ridge and Valley region of central Pennsylvania, it did have a select harvest, mainly oaks, about five years ago. Before then, it was about 40 years ago, when again, it was more of a selective and a, and a high grade harvest. Now, within that 40 year stretch, we've had an increase in deer density, the woolly adelgid, the gypsy moth several times, the emerald ash borer, uh, more frequent droughts, more periods of heavy rain. So that's why there has to be more of a different way of managing timber and cutting timber than it was 50 years ago. Back in 2016, I was taking a walk with a forester deciding what would be the best management practices moving forward for this property. And at the end of the walk, he said this would be a prime candidate for a pulpwood harvest. That's the first time I ever heard of that type of timber harvest. Now, again, a lot of this uh, was uh, uh, primarily birch and red maple or soft maple in this area. So we got another forester who really focuses on pulpwood harvest and pulpwood cuts came in and said, yes, this was certainly a prime candidate. So what makes a pulpwood harvest so unpopular? Well, when you compare prices, what you would typically be getting in board feet for salt timber is much higher than what you would be getting paid by the tonnage for the pulpwood timber. Now, a lot of this is going to be made into products uh, such as uh, pallet wood or paper products, also mulch. So there are multiple uses, even firewood. We have seen uh, this timber harvester actually using it for firewood too. So why even have a pulpwood harvest? Well, take a look behind me and you'll see that we have tall, healthy, and diverse trees that are left. These trees will be the primary seed source for regeneration over the next couple of years. With less competition, these trees will also increase their diameter size much faster. In about 10 years, this landowner could have a profitable salt timber harvest and have a new generation of pole-sized desirable trees like oak and hickory, sugar maple, poplars that are really ready for a canopy release. Now, what if we decided not to have a pulpwood harvest and went with the traditional timber cut? Yeah, we would certainly get more money for our oaks and poplar, and it would be more money for the landowner today. But this stand would have severely limited timber value moving forward with less desirable trees dominating much of this property. Now, each property is different, and the right kind of timber cut will be different. It's just this one was a good candidate for a pulpwood cut. Most foresters will provide recommendations for the type of harvest and really best management practices moving forward, but it ends up coming down to what the landowner wants to do. And sometimes it is just for more of a profitable type of cut. Now this landowner is looking for more of a healthier, diverse, long-term management goal. But also, can you imagine what this is gonna look like in two years? The wildlife uh, for food and for cover, I think it's gonna be incredible. I know there is a lot of trendy hunting techniques like food plots, hinge cutting, and yeah, I've, I've done all of that. But a pulpwood cut like this, that's great habitat for probably the next 10 to 15 years. Now, because pulpwood is not a highly profitable cut, there aren't many companies that focus on this type of harvest. And there's only a handful of companies in Pennsylvania, such as this one, that uses a processor machine to cut the timber and a forwarder to move it. I would love to see more interest and competition in this type of lower grade timber. It's a natural resource. It's a renewable resource that could certainly be used in many different ways. And having more interest in these types of harvests would certainly benefit a lot of properties such as this one.